Um, so business agenda item A, continuing our presentation of the 2023-2024 mid-biennium budget update. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, tonight, we continue the mid-buy budget review with an overview of the capital improvement program and other funds. Per the budget calendar, budget meetings are scheduled during the month of October and November, with a budget ordinance scheduled for adoption on December 4th. The second public hearing is scheduled on November 6th. In addition, in addition the public can submit comments throughout the process. I would like to recognize Adolfo, Adolfo uh, Bailon, City Manager, Maya Andrews, Public Works Director, Casey Stanley, Parks Director, and Caitlin Graham, Financial Analyst, for their assistance with the presentation. Next slide. This slide provides a summary of what the capital improvement program looks like and how the budgeting works. The three capital funds are parks and general government, transportation, and surface water management. These capital programs are maintained as a multi-year budget due to projects typically requiring more than one year to complete. As a result, the capital programs are reconciled and updated on an annual basis to make certain resources are available to fund on ongoing and potential new projects. Next slide, please. To date, the current revenue sources for capital projects are minimal. The key operating funds, general, street, and surface water management provides limited funding for capital projects after covering operating expenditures. The funding fluctuates year to year depending on the financial status of the funds. The other funds identified on the slide are restricted to specific purposes and two of the funds are currently obligated to pay debt service first. The city needs to continue to explore other external re revenue sources such as grants. Without adequate funding, the delay of maintenance or improvements on capital assets increases future maintenance cost, may shorten the assets life, and may reduce the public benefit. Next slide, please. This table identifies the capital projects and budgeted expenditures for the Parks and General Government CIP. The revised amount in 2023 and 2024 is 9.5 million and 1.2 million respectively. The expenditures are led by Seher slide, design and engineering work related to the future maintenance facility and the acquisition of Lakeview Park from the Highline School District. Next slide. Funding sources for the capital projects are led by grants, transfers, and other city funds, and use of fund balance. For the next part of the presentation, I will hand off to Casey, Parks Director. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the following capital improvement projects have been presented to Council in 2022, and most of the projects have been completed, and a few are in early, will be completed in early 2024. Next slide. Oh, wait. Sorry. Stay there. Um, the Mosier Memorial Park is located at 430 South, 156th Street, and is the city's only sports complex. Over the last few years, the complex has been closed to sport field use. In March of this year, we were able to open field one to a new multi-purpose turf field, but had to keep the north and south multi-purpose fields closed until they could be repaired after the construction project and a full season for the new grass to mature. The project includes improvement to the stormwater system for all the fields the park, and the parking lot. New parking lot design, a new turf multi-purpose field for field one, which includes a soccer, baseball, fast pitch, and lacrosse new restroom and concession building, and new lighting uh, scheduling system. The sports complex will be fully opened in March of 2024, and more details for the grand opening will be sent out in January of 24. Next slide. The Barron Community Center is located at 147006 Avenue Southwest and is the, main, is the city's main community center for all activities and all age groups. This project was to replace the old the oldest of the two HVAC systems at the Beering Community Center, which was exceeding its life expectancy. Mm -hmm. The goal of the project was to maintain consistent heating and cooling and ventilation and ventilating in the half of the building to strive to meet the energy shelters requirements of the hazard mitigation plan. Next slide. The Lakeview Park is located at 422 Southwest 160th Street and is a 2.8 acre neighborhood park and offers a new toddler playground, older youth 
playground plan for replacement in uh, 24, a basketball court, open lawn area, picnic spaces, and a dog park. The city has leased this park from the Highline School District since 1983, and it's in its final stretches of purchasing the property. Next slide. The park's facility and restoration capital improvement uh, program funds funding is to support major park projects and facility deferred maintenance projects. It's most it's um, important to maintain infrastructure regularly to prevent more expensive replacement investments sooner than necessary. The funding comes from the King County Park Levy Fund that is allocated to King County cities. Uh, the, uh, the projects that happened this last year were tuck pointing of the Beering Community Center, Councilware Park Planning Enhancement, and the Mosier Backstops and Fencing Replacement Project. Next slide. The Parks and Facility Planning Capital Improvement Plan is, is funding to support plans and studies necessary to allocate future capital funding, um, obtain grant funding, and begin construction work. Many times these plans are required by state and federal agencies or regulations. Next page. This project is one you're all familiar with. It's a maintenance facility. As you know, we uh, don't have appropriate or sufficient space for our parks and public works equipment. Um, our lease with the Port of Seattle, where we currently are housed for public works, is up in December 2024, and we will be pursuing trying to get an extension on that beginning next year. Um, both public works and parks maintenance centers experience frequent and costly break-ins and vandalism in the meantime, so we're uh, desperately trying to get on top of that. Um, the total cost is around somewhere between 25 and 40 million, but that's going to depend greatly on partnership opportunities and a selected site and timing. The ARPA funds of 2.1 million are um, going to be used for finalizing site selection and commencing design. And then we have an additional 10 million saved in the reserve fund toward a potential $25 million project. Um, in recent weeks, we have been in meetings with Port of Seattle staff to determine if there's a uh, feasibility for our uh, Port and Burien to share the port property in the southern part of NERA bounded by 518 Des Moines Memorial Drive and 8th. Uh, the port and the city are currently developing a memorandum of understanding to um, work on a feasibility study of that together in the next couple of months. Um, and their willingness to enter in that MOU is a positive step in this, on this project. Um, and we had a meeting last week and we're having another meeting this week. Um, so they are actively at the table talking with us about that site. And we'll keep you apprised as that moves forward. Do my list. There we go. Oh, I got it. Um, Eagle Landing Stair Removal Project. This is a project you approved, approved um, quite some time ago. We opened bids last week on that project, and we expect the contract will be executed in the next week or so. Uh, work is expected to be done using a barge-mounted logging yarder and rigging attached to the hillside uh, to minimize impact to the slope and reduce risk to the workers. The exact schedule will be determined after the contract is ex executed, but I expect it to be quite soon. And then there's Seahurst slide. This project uh, is the on the entrance road to Seahurst Park. The bids for this project were also open last week and a contract will also be executed in the next couple of weeks. Um, the first and most urgent phase of this project uh, constructs the necessary soldier pile along the area you see in the picture here. Um, that work will also uh, need to be followed by a second phase, phase, and we've included that in the budget. That second phase does some stream work to keep the stream away from the road further down. The second phase is also a requirement of the first phase as far as our environmental mitigation. So uh, working with the permitting agencies, they're permitting the first phase, assuming we're going to do the second phase due to the mitigation for both. Um, and so we include both phases in the budget, but the first phase will be uh, commencing quite soon. Next. Uh, the Manhattan School uh, Park is located at uh, 18386 Fourth Avenue Southwest. The city is currently leasing this property from the Highline School District um, to offer a park in the south part of Burien. The city is in the process of replacing a 20-year-old playground and its assets, uh, the benches and tables. We hope to have this project, uh, it will be starting at the beginning of January for, um, or be completed by the beginning of January. Next slide. 
Uh, the following capital projects are new projects proposed for 2024 budget and um, either have not start had not been started yet or in the beginning stages of the project. Next. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, the Parks Facility and Restoration Capital Improvement Program Fund is to support major uh, parks and facility deferred maintenance projects. It is important to maintain the infrastructure regularly to prevent more expensive replacements, investments sooner than necessary. The fund comes from the King County Park Levy Fund. Um, the following projects are planned for 2024. We're replacing uh, shelter roofs down at Mosier, I'm sorry, at Seahurst Park, uh, and we're repairing or removing aging buildings and asphalt repairs. The Lakeview Park, which I mentioned earlier, um, located at 422 Southwest 160th Street, uh, as I mentioned, it, we are in the planning stages to replace the five to 12 year old playground, the picnic tables and benches. And we uh, hope to have this project kick off at the first quarter of 2024. Next. Uh, the parks facilities and planning capital improvement plan will continue to fund the parks recreation and open space plan that we hope to have completed by March, uh, 2024. The funding for the Bering community community center structural design to comply with the seismic standards and the, has, the hazard mitigation plan, which we are currently in the contract negotiation phase right now. Funding for the Hilltop master plan design, which is in the development of goals and themes concept for the park phase. And then the funding of the ADA audit and transition plan for the parks and facilities as required by the American with Disabilities Act. The additional plans will be prioritized by the upcoming adoption of the 2024 PROS plan. Thank you, Casey. Uh, this table identifies the capital projects and budget expenditures for the transportation CIP. The revised amount in 2023 and 2024 is 14.1 million and 6.9 million respectively. The expenditures are led by South 136th Street sidewalk improvements, 4th and 6th Avenues, Southwest and Southwest 148th Street intersection, pavement management program, and 30th Avenue Southwest slope stabilization. Next slide, please. Funding sources for the capital projects are led by grants, use of fund balance, and transfers from other city funds. For the next part of the presentation, I'll hand off to Maya, Public Works Director. Okay, the first slide shows uh, work completed in 2023 on our pavement management program, as well as some additional accessibility improvements adjacent to that work. On the left side is uh, South 192nd between 1st and 4th, and on the right is uh, in that same area, 4th Avenue South and 186th Street. Um, the pavement management program is our highest priority. We use pavement management software to help us select streets and treatments uh, for each year's project. Um, and that software program does an analysis and helps us do that in the most cost-effective way uh, to improve our overall pavement condition index. In 2023, we did some um, full depth repairs near the downtown in the 160th area, as well as grind and overlay um, preservation work in the Manhattan neighborhood as was shown on the previous slide. Um, we also have two other ongoing programs. So all three of these programs on the slide are annual programs that we include in the budget. The other two are um, to remove accessibility barriers and upgrade signal controllers. Um, often we use those ADA funds um, with our pavement management program and we pick up some of the um, accessible sidewalk ramps and things like that along the way. Um, but we also look to our ADA plan and specific um, requests from members of the community who have ex specific accessibility needs. So from time to time, we get somebody who uses a certain route who needs improvements on the signals or, or ramps on their route, and we work with them on that. Um, uh, let's see. For both programs, we sometimes let the funds accumulate in the account a couple of years so that we can do a larger project, construction project. So sometimes we plan for maybe two or three years out to design some improvements and put them all out to bid as a larger project. Um, okay, moving along. 148th. Uh, signals at 4th and 6th, so that's here by City Hall on 148th and then right by the Community Center at 6th. Um, after last year's budget presentation, we learned we received a $3.9 million grant from the State Transportation Improvement Board for this project. Um, we are also now working with Sound Transit to secure additional money uh, towards, they want to do some additional pedestrian lighting in this area and other improvements. 
Um, the design is nearly complete. Uh, it does include a full signal at the uh, intersection by the community center. Right now there's that pedestrian signal <laughs> and it'll include a brand new full signal at that intersection. Um, we do have a small amount of right of way um, that we need to acquire for that project. It's a strip take on one of the properties and we'll be talking to you about that, I believe next week. Um, but that project is moving along and we hope to be in construction soon after we get the right of way. And then, uh, can I get the next? There it goes. Let's see if it stays there, okay. Um, this is the 4th Avenue Southwest sidewalk project. Um, this is between 156th and 160th, um, between here and um, Sylvester. And this constructs um, a sidewalks on the east side of the road and bike lanes on both sides, um, connecting to the bike, bike lanes that are already at 156. Um, the corridor is extremely constrained with utilities. There's multifamily homes, residential homes, um, a lot of grade challenges, and we will be to fit one sidewalk in and two bike lanes, we will be removing some trees um, and we won't be able to replace them within the project limits because it's, it's so tight in there. Um, we had been seeking pro, uh, funds for this for the uh, entire decade plus that I've been here. And after our CIP presentation last year, we received a grant for $2.37 million in construction funds through the federal government. Um, those funds are available to us in 2025, but that gives us next year to acquire the there's again, some strip takes, small right-of-way takes on that one that we also have to do. It will be critical that we get those right-of-way takes on time though, because that federal money is highly dependent on our timing. So next year is gonna be a big year for us to get that project ready to go um, so that we're able to use that money we received. Um, then we have South 136th Street. This project is currently under construction. Um, this is putting the sidewalks on both sides of 136 between First and Des Moines Memorial Drive. Um, on your screen on the left is the conditions that uh, existed up until now. Um, that picture of a tree that is up, uprising the, or upheaving the sidewalk by probably over a foot in that spot and taking up most of the width, there's no accessible width around that tree. That is frequent throughout this corridor. This has been one of the worst sections of sidewalk we've had in the city. Um, and also uh, one we had been seeking money for for many years and it was funded by the Transportation Improvement Board um, we will be finishing construction here, barring any rain or anything like that, um, in the next month or so. So um, hope to be done. If not, we may have to delay some final work until we get to better, better weather. But um, we see some gaps in the next couple of weeks where we may be able to get it complete. Um, we did remove some of those trees, obviously, and um, we are putting some trees back where we can. But again, it's another project where it's very, very tight between the, the property lines and and what we're trying to get done. So uh, hope to have that done soon. And then a little quicker here is Moody, there we go. Um, King County Partnerships, as you know, we have the H line began service this summer. That project still has some remaining work to do and they hope to have it done by the end of the year, but that includes some road site striping, signing and signals that are still not, <clears throat> starting to lose my voice, the signals that are still online, not online, um, that work, Hopefully we'll be done by the end of the year. Ridership though has been steadily growing month to month. Um, and right now H-Line is in the top 10 routes with regard to its ridership numbers, which is great news. Um, we have a tentative date for a briefing from King County Metro, I believe on December 4th. Um, and I'll be um, checking back in with them to prep them for, for coming in here that date. And then the other project on the slide is Lake to Sound Trail. The final segment uh, in Burien is between um, Normandy Road and 8th Avenue South on Des Moines Memorial Drive. And that should be going out for construction and advertisement in the next month. Um, and King County uh, manages and, and, and pays for the bulk of that project through grants. And then we will own and maintain it once they are through. Um, 30th Avenue slope stabilization is a project to stabilize beach erosion um, that in the long term will affect the road above it at 30th Avenue Southwest, which provides access to multiple homes. Um, however, we haven't made a lot of progress on that this year um, and we have some time, but it remains a priority. We've carried the funds forward into next year. Uh, next year, we will be doing studies that are gonna be necessary to get permits. And there's a lot of them. We need to do an eelgrass survey Forge, forage fish analysis, cultural resources assessment, a bathymetric survey, wind and wave modeling, 
um, there's a lot that's going to go into stabilizing that that beach. Uh, our plan is to use some kind of soft revetment or living shoreline composed of plants and rocks and things that will stabilize the slope. Um, transportation master plan is well underway um, and should be finishing up in the next few months. Um, we've been working under the Shape Your City umbrella along with the Parks Pros Plan and the Burien Comprehensive Plan. We've got tons of uh, community input. It's been really exciting to have that much input on any one of our plans, but even more fun to have it on all of our plans at the same time. Um, the next open house for Shape Your City is on December 6th, and we're going to at that, um, by then we'll have a draft list of projects for the transportation master plan. And we're gonna be doing some more outreach about the December 6th event in the coming month or coming weeks, I should say. Um, and it's currently posted on the Shape Your City webpage information about that. Um, and then this is another project. Uh, oops, let me see if I can, there we go. Um, another project that's underway, um, 152nd and 8th study. We've been talking with SeaTac about realigning these intersections. Um, we already did a project with the Port of Seattle, the NERA pilot program, where we talked about the safety issues at these three intersections. Um, but the C city of SeaTac has asked us to do a little bit uh, further study on them. We haven't we haven't actually started it yet because city of SeaTac is still um, getting some funds to contribute to the project, but we should be doing that soon. It actually will land nicely with our work with the port on the maintenance facility because. Um, these improvements are along that frontage and how this road works will um, affect whoever develops there. We'll have to um, work within the design of how we want to do this roadway configuration. So whether it's us or a different developer, we'll be doing um, some work around these roads. Um, okay, this one is a little bit, um, we talked about this briefly after CIP was presented last year. So last year I came in and said we were we applied for two crosswalk grants. One was at 116th near Evergreen and one was at 21st and 152nd. Um, we did not get the grant for 21st and 152nd Southwest. Um, and that was the one I had put in the budget. So this year we swapped them around and we're, we put this one in because we do did get this grant. So this is $639,000 grant we got for a Hawk signal, which is one similar to the one at Mosier on 156. And uh, we will be starting design in the coming months. Um, and we're coordinating closely with the development of the new high school. And then the fourth project that we got grant money for after the um, CIP presentation last year was a $200,000 request from the new Safe Streets for All federal funding program. Um, and that was for a road safety action plan. The significance of the road safety action plan is that um, once we have the plan, we're eligible for a huge bucket of federal money for safety projects but we have to have adopted a, a local road safety action plan first. So um, this is a step that's necessary to get access to that money. The plan is specifically about safety. It looks at reducing fatality and serious injury accidents. And it's focused on data from crashes, maintenance logs and traffic violations. So it's a very specific type of plan. It's not as broad as the transportation master plan but very much a safety plan. Um, so now I'll hand it back to finance director to give you an overview of the stormwater fund. Uh, thank you, Maya. Uh, this table, identify next slide, please. This table identifies the capital projects and budget expenditures for the surface and water management CIP. The revised amounts in 2023 and 2024 is 6.6 6 million and 350,000 respectively. The expenditures are led by Miller Creek enhancements, South 140th Street and Des Moines Memorial Drive trunk line and the resident branch, excuse me, and the residential drainage improvement program. Next slide. The funding sources for the capital projects are led by contributions from other local agencies, transfer from the surface water management fund, use of fund balance and grants. For the next part of the presentation, I'll hand off again to Maya, public works director. Okay, so the first pr project here is our residential drainage improvement program, which we call RDIP. Um, and we have two projects that are under design right now. Um, one is the Meritage Pond repairs at South 168th Street and 3rd Avenue South. Uh, this repairs some erosion likely caused by burrowing animals actually, but that erosion is progressing onto private property from the city's property. And it's also uh, causing the pond to fill up with sediment. So we're gonna be cleaning out the pond and doing a little um, wall along the edge there to deal with the erosion issues. 
And then on the right side of the screen is another project. Um, this is a, a flooding project on 21st and 19th Southwest. Um, this neighborhood has flooding in both backyards and some basements. And it's this uh, project was uh, received a flood control grant of $371,000. Um, the project has was delayed. We thought we were gonna do it earlier this year, but it was delayed due to some utility conflict issues, which we've now worked out. So now that those have been resolved, we're gonna be advertising for construction in the next few months. And then 20th Avenue South, this project is complete. This project was completed earlier this year. It replaced about 1300 feet of um, failing pipe on uh, 20th between 120th and 124th. And this was a project listed in our previous storm drainage master plan. And this project is another one that uh, you've seen before. This is Miller Creek. It's currently under construction. If you've driven down Des Moines Memorial Drive, you've seen the construction work going on. Um, this is the partnership between the city of SeaTac, the Port of Seattle, and uh, Burien. The, the port has contributed money financially. We also received a State Department of Ecology grant on this project. Um, and SeaTac is paying for the crossing of the, the creek where it crosses Des Moines Memorial Drive. And that project oh, also is running a little behind because the procurement for steel pipe has gone long and it caused us to miss a, a fish window. We're bumping a little bit into next summer's fish window. So a lot of the work will be done before then, but the final parts of the project won't be able to be complete until summer of next year. This project is um, also uh, was designed as part of the NERA pilot program. It provides stormwater infrastructure for existing and future development on 140th. The project is fully designed, um, but needs some final permitting work before it's ready to construct. I'm suspecting this one will be a springtime um, construction project at this point. And then finally, the stormwater management action plan. Um, this, this one's nearly complete. The plan was a uh, requirement of our current NPDES permit. The, um, we're responding to some requested edits from Ecology uh, um, with regard to our plan, and then we need to put it out for CPA review and complete it. Um, so it should be complete by the end of the year. The plan selects a specific subbasin and develops an action plan to improve water quality in that subbasin and to with the idea of reducing harmful effects of stormwater runoff. Interestingly enough, our next five-year NPDES permit begins uh, in next summer, and it's going to require two things at this point. It's going to require us to start implementing a project off of this plan. So in the next round of budget, we'll be proposing which projects need to get funded uh, in that five-year period. It also is going to require us to do a second SMAP uh, for a different subbasin. And again, that's in that next NPDES five-year window. So we'll have to do a second one for another subbasin. Um, so, so this is feeling like it's going to become, as a result of the permit, permit requirements, it's going to become an ongoing annual capital program, is, is my guess. Um, so now I'm going to, I guess, we're going to pause for a moment before we pass it back to the finance director to, to, director to discuss some of the other funds in the mid-buy process and see if you have any questions or comments on what Casey and I have covered on transportation, parks, and stormwater. <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Um, first of all, thank you both for your presentation. You're excellent government employees, and I appreciate the in-depth analysis and awareness of where we're at and where we're moving toward. Um, I was especially interested, Maya, I'm sure you would guess this, in your news on the public works facility. Um, and I'm wondering if there's anything we could do as a council elected to elected um, to let the port commission know um, that we're eager to make this happen to see if there's anything we can do on that end is if. Uh, let me, um, let's see how this meeting goes this week and see if we get moving on a memorandum of understanding and um, we can report back at one of the next one or two meetings probably and just see where it's going. But I felt very positive about them reaching out and scheduling uh, multiple meetings in this last couple yeah. of weeks. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. Great, thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Council Member Sarah. Oh, just, I'm sorry, actually, can I call on Council Member Garcia? I think you've written, and then we'll go to you. I'm sorry. Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, great job from, from both of you and from all the staff behind, behind you, uh, especially on seeking grant funding for all the projects. It's really exciting to see 
so much invested all across the city. Uh, so this is more of a thank you. Uh, and th there is one comment more for maybe for long term next year, potentially to add to this type of presentation, which is a sort of mapping of where these investments are in the city. I, for the most part, you know, see the address and pretty comfortable seeing where these are going. But I think it would be very helpful for the council and our city, our public to be aware of where in the city these capital improvements are happening um, as we move forward. So thank you very much. Great job. Council members. Uh, Council member Garcia actually said very similar to what I was going to, which is, is first of all, um, just how much the two of your departments do and for how much of Burien that you're just covering little neighborhoods, roads that um, people don't know need anything done and except the people who live there. And, and so just thank you for all of that. And um, I wanted to concur that while I was watching and listening, I was trying to mentally have a map and pop all those things into the different parts of Burien, um, but, but at the same time, stay focused on what you were talking about. Um, and I think it would be really helpful to have the project mapped out for us. So thank you. I have a question about the um, traffic road safety action plan, which I was happy to hear about. Do you have a timeline on that? And by the way, I was at a meeting and there was um, concern about 128th and military road. I think there was a recent fatality and I'm sure there's other roadways in Burien where that happens from time to time. So looking at it systematically would be great. Is there a timeline that you're shooting for? The grants, uh, in the grant application we had submitted, it would start next year. I think they are ready um, for us to proceed now. So we can, um, we need to execute our grant agreement, but but we are able to go early. So it should be in the next few months to get going on it. Thank you. Other questions, Deputy Mayor? Um, just really quick, the, the initiative from the federal government on, uh, what was it called again, the road safety for all or? Mm -hmm. Um, I remember we were actually briefed on that last year at the National League of Cities by Secretary Buttigieg, which was cool. And so is there more money that we're able to apply for that you haven't applied for yet um, in different categories? Yeah, my understanding is um, there's still quite a bit of money in that program. Um, and again, but we have to have a safety yeah. action plan. So once we have it, yes. Yes. So why didn't uh, you said the the project on 21st and 152nd didn't get funded? Is there a reason why that one didn't get funded, but the 116th one did? That was a local state. Uh, uh, oh, that wasn't through the federal. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was the the um, similarly named program. Got it. Okay. School safe, <laughs> safe routes to schools. schools. Yeah, Got it. safe okay. routes to schools. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Well, thank you very much, Eric and team, and looking forward to a little more information. For the next part of the, thank you, Mayor. For the next part of the presentation, I'll be covering the other funds. Next slide, please. As you recall, the purpose of this budget review is to address budgetary items that need modification and by state law must be completed no sooner than September 1st and no later than December 31st. In other words, this update is an incremental request to amend the 2324 adopted budget. Proposed changes to these funds primarily consist of technical adjustments regarding revenues and or expenditures. Next slide, please. The Public Works Reserve Fund accumulates revenue to provide funding for the city's capital improvement program. The primary revenue source is the real estate excise tax or otherwise known as REIT. The revenue estimates are reduced due to the rising interest rates that have resulted in a decrease in the housing market demand. Capital contributions are increased in both 23 and 24 to fund capital projects. Next slide. The Equipment Reserve Fund provides funding to replace vehicles and equipment at the end of their estimated service life. The fund receives transfers from the General Street and Surface Water Management Funds. In 2023, the transfers are increased for both street and surface water management to cover the cost of an upgraded truck replacement. This purchase will lead to an additional plow and sander during the winter season. Next slide. 
The general fund contributes funding to the art and public places fund. These funds are used to acquire, repair, and maintain works of art. The remaining uh, expenditure authority from 2022 was previously carried over into 2023 and reflected on this chart. This was approved earlier this year via the housekeeping budget ordinance. Next slide. The capital projects reserve fund is exactly as the name suggests, a reserve to fund capital projects. In 2023, the capital contribution is increased to fund the Parks and General Government Capital Improvement Program. Next slide. The Transportation Benefit District Fund is just funded by the $20 fee on vehicles that are registered within city limits with the purpose of funding debt service on prior street overlay and current street overlay projects. In 2024, revenues are reduced based on the current trend. Next slide. The purpose of the State Drug Enforcement Forfeiture Fund is to account for state seizure funds received by the city. The use of these funds is restricted to, purchase that will, to purchases that will enhance the city's ability to investigate drug-related crimes and incidents. There are no expenditure changes. The changes are beginning and ending fund, adjust, fund balance adjustments based on the revenue and expenditure activity in 2022. Next slide. Like the prior fund, the purpose of the Federal Drug Enforcement Forfeiture Fund is to account for federal funds received by the city. These funds are also restricted. There are no expenditure changes. The changes are beginning and ending fund adjustments based on the revenue and expenditure activity in 2022. Next slide. Like the prior fund, the purpose of the Federal Criminal Forfeiture Fund is to account for federal funds related to the participation in a federal task force. This was the new fund that we created last year for the budget. These funds are also restricted. There are no expenditure changes to this fund. The remaining expenditure authority at the end of the year will be carried over into 2024. Last slide. Next slide. The debt service fund collects the resources necessary to pay the principal and interest on long-term debt. Only debt service and related costs are paid from this fund. The primary changes are related to beginning and ending fund adjustments based on the revenue and expenditure activity in 2022. Next slide. Uh, this concludes the presentation of the capital improvement program and other funds. And are there any questions? Any questions for Eric? Deputy Mayor. Just to say thank you for being on top of this and such an excellent finance department. Um, I just, you know, this is this is always moving and changing. And you mentioned, could we actually go back to the slide um, uh, about REIT? REIT, yes. Yeah, about REIT. Public Works Reserve. That's the first one. Uh, the first, this one. Thank you. Um, this isn't meant to be answered right now, but I'm wondering if, do you have data on um, the specific contributions as to why the revenue changes went down significantly? Yeah, so basically that's, it's based on the housing market. So right now, um, interest rates are high. Right. So the demand in regard to buying houses are low. So that's the primary driver. The fund's still healthy. Okay. Um, we're doing fine. Um, we're at a solid position. But I did reduce the revenues just to be show more to be more of a realistic picture. But do we have those specific numbers of the housing market in Burien? Uh, not not specifically. It's just okay. based on the region and just what we know. What's, okay, what's got happening. it. Just happening. It's general knowledge. Okay. Thank you.